So my favorite thing about watching car reviews on YouTube is people make, people are able to drive the car for, I think usually about a week and they can already tell you everything about the car. So I've had this car for over a year now. I put 22,000 miles on it. I daily drive it. So um, I'm going to tell you little things that I dislike and like about the car. I already made a car review at 10,000 miles, but uh, some opinions have changed. Now at this point, um, I feel like I've kind of gotten used to the 700 horsepower. Uh, the car doesn't feel as fast to me as it did at the beginning, of course, uh, which does sound kind of weird, but uh, that's how I've been with cars. Um, after a while, I just seem to get used to them and it just doesn't, it's not as exciting as it used to be. Um, I know I mentioned on a few of my videos that uh, this is the highest performance car for the price, and then I always get uh, messages, put a supercharger on a Mustang and that'll be faster, but I'm always talking about stock cars. You could do a whole bunch of stuff to other cars and it would be faster than this, but this is the most powerful stock car within the category, like muscle car. So. Um, like I said, I've had the car for about a year. There are a few things I don't like, and probably the biggest thing is just how the car looks. Now, I'm a fan of Challengers. I like how they look. I like how Chargers look. But um, you spend 60, some people even spend 80, 90 thousand dollars for a Hellcat, and it looks almost identical, almost identical to an SXT RT. I mean, the only thing that really separates it from those is the front splitter, the SRT, the Hellcats, and the, the wing in the back. Nothing really else tells you, okay, this is a special car. It has twice the horsepower as the $20,000 version. So, I mean, it, it is nice. It's almost like a sleeper kind of car because not many people know what it is, but the people who do know what it is are like amazed at it and love the car. Like, um, a lot of people will ask me, oh, how much horsepower does that have? And I'm like, 700, like, no. What, what did you get done to it and all that? But other people, is that a Hellcat? 700 horsepower? Using the red key? Like, even cops do that to me sometimes. But, um, yeah, that's probably my biggest thing is just the car doesn't really look all that special compared to other Challengers. I really wish they did a little bit more to it. Not that there is much more you could do. I did see pictures of, like, a 2018, um... I remember what it was, but it was a Challenger. It had like a wide body kit on it. And uh, yeah, that's another thing about the car. The, the tires in the back suck. Everybody knows that. That's on all the reviews that the tires are awful. The um, You have to get aftermarket tires for them. Um, uh, another complaint that I have about the car are the seats. Now, they're definitely comfortable. They're I, Like I said, I drive this car every day, 22,000 miles in a little over a year. So that's, that's quite a bit of miles. I spent a lot of time in the car. And... Um, the seats are good for riding around, but once you start turning and stuff, of course, the car is not meant to be going around turns and everything. It's more for a straight line. But still, even though the car is really heavy, it's, it is capable of taking turns fairly quickly. And while you're doing that, you're like sliding out of the seat. You have to like hold on to the center console, like the armrest, just to hold yourself up. It's it, it, The seats... Are, they're good seats. They're just not what I've really been using them for like I spent a lot of time up in like the mountains areas over here And uh, there's a lot of turns and everything. I like driving around fast, but it's kind of hard shifting around in the seats so I wish the seats were a little bit more bucket like biggest thing about cars like this is gas now um, I've definitely gone 30 miles to the gallon. I can say that I've been on the highway Of course, no one was on the highway with me. So um, if you live in an area like New Jersey, New York um Florida, Los Angeles, or California, Los Angeles isn't a state. A uh, place like that where there's a lot of traffic, um, expect to be getting around nine miles to the gallon. That's what I've seen, especially if you drive like I do, um, where you just need to make the most noise possible. So, I mean, gas mileage, if you're in a low populated area is pretty good. But if you're in a really high populated area, if you live anywhere near New York City, um, I suggest you don't get the car because that just seems awful having to drive through New York City with a car like this. It kind of defeats the purpose. It's like people who have Lamborghinis and they just, that's pretty much all they do. They live in New York City and they have that car. It just, it just seems awful. Problems that you will run into with this car if you want more power is that it's a little bit harder to uh, dial this car up to more horsepower. Like if you get a stock Mustang, like people have told me, GTs, you can put a supercharger on it and uh, you get 700 horsepower. 
this car, it, this car already has a supercharger. It already has a cold air intake. So already those are two things that can be fairly expensive and do add quite a bit of horsepower to your car. So you start spending more money to get the car up. I think right now you could probably spend, I think they said about $15,000 and you can get about 1200 horsepower, which is pretty good, but then that doesn't mention the uh, drivetrain. You definitely have to upgrade that if you're roaming around with uh, 1200 horsepower. Uh, personally, I'm not a Dodge fanboy. I really like a lot of their products. Um, I don't really understand people's like, people who talk trash about other car companies. They all bring out good vehicles. They're all great in their own way. But I just prefer Dodge because they have brought out the highest performance stock vehicles. Now. Once again, people told me, oh, you can put a supercharger on a Mustang, you can put a supercharger on that, and you can get 700 horsepower. But it doesn't come out stock. Um, a lot of times you can get a warranty on it, on the supercharger, on parts of the car, but when you start dialing up uh, a car that's not uh, stock to go that fast, um, you have to replace other things, and it, it's just a whole thing. So that's why I decided to get um, a car with the stock 700 horsepower, then buying a mustang like i like mustangs i have nothing against mustang my first car was a mustang just none of their cars are as fast start doing mods to the car just because like i said um i've kind of gotten used to the power and everything the first thing that i want to do is make it louder so i'll probably get um muffler delete mid muffler delete and uh maybe cats deleted or something like that but um that, that's probably the first thing is going to be the exhaust uh, just because after a year of hearing it, it you kind of get used to it. it doesn't sound as loud now when i first heard the car inside the dealership they started up i was amazed i thought it was the loudest thing that i've ever heard in my life but then after starting it up every single day and driving it around you kind of get used to that so i kind of want it a little bit louder um make it a little bit more noticeable to uh, police officers that's my favorite thing next thing would probably be a tune i have seen people get up to about 800 horsepower with uh just a decent tune on it so that could be uh something next and then of course just standard uh pulleys maybe a better supercharger we'll see okay, um this wasn't so much of a review i mean i've already done a review on this car things i like things i don't like uh because you can just find out how much horsepower the car has how much how fast it is zero to 60 how fast it is in a quarter mile uh and then of course in every um in every video or and of course in every review the person's gonna do a burnout <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.